Let's talk immigration, ladies and gentlemen, as it pertains to UK and Brexit. While immigration was not the sole instigator behind the EU referendum, it was deemed as one of the key issues that brought the referendum on. It has been a contentious topic between politicians on both the left and the right. Nobody seems to agree on how to solve this issue. Interesting times indeed. We know that in many general populations felt unheard by the very politician representing them, disillusioned and discontented, voters wanting to voice their concern on what they view as high levels of immigration and the effect it has on their communities and the way of life. Often referendum has been referred to as a protest vote with our politician inability or dare I say lack of a want to approach the hot potato issue about immigration and border control. Immigration is in fact such a hot topic that not only was it one of the deciding factors in the vote for Brexit, we recently saw a win for anti-immigration supporters with the reform of immigration laws that came into effect in 2016, making it harder for immigrants to obtain permanent residency in the UK. One of Britain's many contention with Brussels was the freedom to control its own borders and subsequently stem the flow of immigration. All in all, it is not too much a surprise that we ended up with a Brexit result. However, what will then be the consequence for people already living here? And what about the British immigrants living in other EU countries? What about the Commonwealth, the Caribbean? With Brexit now waiting in the wings and recent changes to immigration laws such as the 35,000 threshold, is Britain becoming a society that values people origins and incomes rather than their contribution to the society around them. Let's talk immigration, ladies and gentlemen. Share your comments below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with the hashtag Silburn TV. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans, and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Come hear Courtney's plans for the future of Victoria Mutual in the UK. Get updates on Jamaica and share your concerns about the current state of affairs. Meet other members of the leadership and property services team from Jamaica, including the Chairman of Victoria Mutual, Michael McMorris. Friday, June 16th, Unity Centre, NW10. Thursday, June 22nd, at Tottenham Town Hall. And Friday, June 23rd at the Kia Oval. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission is free. Call 0208 801 6777 to confirm your attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. As we are going global now, Brexit and everything is taking over. Listen, joining us today, we have Vendris Henry, a man with significant experience in the justice system, a lawyer by trade, and who specializes in immigration and criminal law. Vendris, how are you doing, sir? Pleasure, pleasure. Fantastic. Good. Yes, sir? Good, good. I'm glad you're here because we have met a few times at the uh, Jamaica High Commission and different issues regarding um, immigration especially when it comes on to, as we are fellow Jamaicans. Um, I'm from Orchard, uh, where are you from? Overview, I mean, St. Andrews. No, St. Andrew. That's great. <laughs> you know, that's good. You know, and uh, we're always having these issues about immigration and, um, you know, for our fellow people in the Caribbean, really helping them out. And one of the reasons I, I want this show to be uh, educational, I consider this show educational. Some shows are inspirational. I think it's inspirational as well because you're an inspirational person. Some is motivational. I think this is also motivational because young people can be motivated to actually become lawyers, barristers, solicitors, or whatever in this country, the UK. Educational, this is a key aspect. And entertaining, I don't know about the entertaining bit, unless you're going to do a break dance with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All my forte. I'll, 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 try. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Fantastic. So, listen, Brexit just took place recently and uh, immigration played a pivotal role before, during and after. It was at the centre of the campaign, presented as the main concern of the British people. And when I say British people now, it is not just British people, but Brit people who are living in Britain. What does that mean, Vendris, to a person who is about to face deportation to Jamaica, or persons who have <coughs> issues with immigration. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Yeah. Brexit in itself 
was about immigration. Yes. The that's key, your, that's your view. Yeah. The major parties, mm. you know, it's about actually, I mean, um, all immigrants yes. and the influx of immigrants affect Britain and all. Yes. Affect British people every day alive. Yes. What's it all about? Theresa May, mm -hmm. the former Home Secretary, yes. you know, she was very, very actually tough on immigrants, you know, um, draconian immigration laws. Mm -hmm. No, with us, the message from the British people, she has a more actually, I mean, um, bigger mandate, mm -hmm. you know, it's as endorsement, mm -hmm. okay, to have actually more, have more draconian laws in but place. But she was a Remainer at the same time. She was somebody who well, was more for... Well, she was supporting the then Prime Minister. Yes. Very subtly. I mean, mm. she, she didn't come out, obviously, and um, campaign yes. vigorously yes. Yes. for the Remain one. team. She was a silent one. So therefore, yeah. you don't actually, I mean, um, wish, you know, watch the sun for anyway. That's a good point. I, 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 that's my own op opinion. Yes. But I, but I believe, you know, with actually um, Brexit, and only Brexit, you know, you look at actually America with, with, with Trump, obviously, mm. about Brexit, mm. obviously. If you look at France now, the concept of immigration, when people move, move from one place to another, yes. whether actually within a part of border or international. Yes. You know, and if a country believe they need a part of the people, mm -hmm. the law is curtailed to meet that need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With Brexit, what they're saying is this. We don't need actually, um, you know, European immigrants, obviously. We don't have enough, actually, I mean, um, work for them. Mm -hmm. Our schools, our hospital obviously can't manage. Mm -hmm. And obviously people actually, uh, they're spoken that particular way. Yes. Maybe, as far as I'm concerned, not so much actually, I mean, Immigration is about actually, I mean, um, the campaign. Yes, yes. With MPs, with, with actually, I mean, people in power, with actually um, our own national reps, I think they see immigration as a dirty word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No one actually go and campaign vigorously and say, listen, this is actually the benefit of immigration to the UK. Yes. You know, you really obviously, I mean, um, you know, um, the burden too you know, much, yeah, is too much in the system, system. pressure <coughs> in the system. But people are not quick to say, listen, these are the benefits of immigration. Mm -hmm. That's from where we're So we have to look at actually, I mean, um, to me, the reason behind Brexit, mm -hmm. people weren't properly informed, mm -hmm. you know, and they were actually misled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as to the benefits, obviously, of immigration, you know, to this country. So therefore, um, you're saying, okay, uh, 19, after post-war, after the war, yes. um, there was a need for immigrants yes. to come to the UK. Okay, let's use from the Caribbean because, uh, or whatever, to bring and to build back Britain. Yes. Okay, after that at the same time, with the EU coming together, 1973 or whatever like that? Yes, until, yeah, yes, okay. until Free, until, yes. and people start to travel regular, yes. building up the UK, you know, different coffee shops or whatever like that. Are you trying to say then now that Britain is reached to a point whereby they don't need that much again. But I'm saying, after people from the Caribbean is concerned, mm. you know, there are concerns. I don't actually need people from the Caribbean. And with Europe, it's about actually, I mean, uh, ensuring yeah. that actually, I mean, what happened with Germany never happened again. Yes. So it's, it's a two different concept. Mm -hmm. But as we are now, with the European Union and people actually from the Eastern European come to this country and do the jobs that people yes. in the Caribbean used to do, yes. you know, what they're saying, obviously, I mean, is no need. Mm -hmm. for people in the Caribbean anymore. Yeah. But it's, it's two separate concepts. With Europe, about obviously um, ensuring that actually we stay together as a union. Yes. Okay. And obviously ensure that actually, I mean, um, what Italy and Napoleon did Won't before it never never open up again. Yeah. But for the Caribbean, it's about work and of building this country. So, so, so when, when a Caribbean person then hear about Brexit to a certain extent, should they feel as if to say it is going to be impacting them directly? A European will know that it will impact them directly. But should a Caribbean person feel that way? We're all in, in, interdependent. Okay. You know, um, mm -hmm. That's the first thing. You have Caribbean actually family. You, know, you have Caribbean actually mm -hmm. wife. The husband actually is actually yeah. a European citizen. You have actually, I mean, people with, with a wife is um, a European citizen. So mm -hmm. obviously it will impact on actually mm -hmm. people from the Caribbean in more ways than one. But also, if, if actually um, we are saying actually that the, the people, the, the majority of people in this country are concerned about immigration. Mm -hmm. And we have a prime minister who is anti-immigration. Yeah. What she, the message this center is that, okay, I mean, what we're doing is right. Mm -hmm. Our problem is mainly primarily with immigration. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Now with education, you know, not actually in actually in making sure we, we train people mm -hmm. to actually fill actually all these actually posts, you know, skilled, skilled posts. Mm -hmm. What she said, obviously, I mean, all our problems stem from immigration. If we have less immigration, obviously, then we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I don't that she's sending. Is that a fallacy? It's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. But again, to obviously, I mean, I think um, you can't blame people and all. Because actually, I mean, I can't, I can't sit and say, all these people, they are wrong. Yes, and yes. I can't say the Americans are wrong. Yes. What I'm saying to people is this, okay, we need to go out there actually and educate people. Mm -hmm. We need to actually make our presence be felt. Yeah. But yeah. not just by people in our own community, but far and beyond. So therefore, okay, so therefore, there is this resounding feeling then that immigration is at the heart of the current economic woes. Is that a fair assertion? Is that a fair sort of thinking then? Are we saying that? Is that, is that the perception that lots of people have? Yes, most, yes, a lot of people have the perception. And then, and then at the same time, while people have that perception, then could that perception be coming from a leftist liberal thinking vis-a-vis -vis a, 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 a conservative sort of thinking? I would say, I would most actually, I mean, um, it's more right-wing um, sort mm. of thinking than, yeah, yeah. than left sort of thinking, you know, yeah. more right-wing. But I think what we do understand is this. Uh, most, most actually business, a lot of business actually is based on getting cheap, Immigration, yes. labor. Mm. That's a fact, okay? There are a lot of jobs that actually, they are, as far as I'm concerned, actually, I mean, they are a British person who wouldn't take on because it wouldn't be actually economically kind of feasible. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But actually, an immigrant will actually take that job on. Yeah. It's, it's actually a way, a way of life, obviously, mm. and it's a, it's a fact mm. of life as well. But with all that, it's saying, if Brexit happened and actually, and, and uh, America, vote um, Trump in. It was voted actually as the, um, the president of America. Mm -hmm. You have actually France, actually. Um, you don't know what happened in yeah, France. Yeah, because, because so, apparently in France, according to the news recently, is that Le Pen could go in the second round, it, it, it's possible. Which, is, which is a far right, and then another center-right, <laughs> or anti-Brexit, so, so, so anti-EU so anti, anti so, establishment, yeah. So I think obviously we need to actually sit up, obviously, as a people, mm -hmm. as a nation, and take stock. Yes, there need to be change. I mean, mm -hmm. even with uh, the European Union, there has to be change, okay? Mm -hmm. Even the European courts. So we have to actually um, listen to people, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we, as solicitors, we have actually have people from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We also need to actually change in a way where we actually, I mean, um, our outlook on life has changed as well. Yes. B break that down. Um, okay. From the Caribbean perspective, and you just, you just hit the point, um, to a question I was going to come to. You said the, the perception and the thinking towards immigration has now change yes. to the Caribbean. But do you also handle like uh, European, uh, well, European persons not having this issue unless they are entwined with Caribbean people, isn't it? Well, yes, yeah, well, well, they will have issues now and um, um, have people come, come to my office obviously and are concerned about actually, I mean, um, Europeans, the, Europeans yes. with their rights and entitlement. And you have actually European who have actually Caribbean family that's, in this country, that's, that's actually interesting. I have some um, concern. That's interesting. I've, I, I did a recent case where this actually, um, you know, this lady, her husband, was a European actually person, mm -hmm. and she has a child um, for this man, and um, she has a child from that came from Jamaica. Yes. And you know, obviously, we did her case. Um, she actually got actually, um, you know, the right to live with him. Mm -hmm. He's actually treated right in this country. She have a resident document. Yes, yes. But yes. the problem that she will have is this. Um, if uh, we don't know what the negotiation will be like, we don't know what will happen. Yes. You know, um, at any negotiation, but you have actually a family where you have actually one Jamaican um, national, um, which actually is, is, is uh, the wife. Mm -hmm. You also have actually have a child from Jamaica. Yes. It's a Jamaican national, and you also have a child born in this country mm -hmm. to the couple. And one of them yeah? is European. And, and you have a European, uh, European, European husband. So. Yeah. Where do we go from there? So you see, it's, um, it's intertwined. Yes. And this can be a solicited case. Wow. So yes, it will affect not only the European, but also people in the Caribbean, to and, some extent. And, and of course, you know, what, what, what some of the indigenous persons are saying, pressure on the NHS, housing, school system. Um, the, the question is, but are there other factors at play? You know what I mean? Um, is it, because many people are saying, Pointing a finger at the immigration issue at all time is like a sort of um, detracting from other boy. I mean, this election is coming up now. Um, it is going to be real around Brexit. And then once you talk about Brexit, it's going to talk about immigration again. Nobody likes to actually 
confronted because you're going to be deemed as racist or... <laughs> well, immigration is political football. Yeah. You know, yeah. he scored cheap points, you know. Yeah. Um, blame me, I mean, Farage was late for a meeting yeah. um, a few months back and yeah. he said, okay, because the immigrants actually, <laughs> there was so many, many traffic cars on the road. So wow. it's, it's what needs to score actually cheap yeah. points, you know. Yeah. It, it's yeah. sad of, okay, well, we need actually a debate of substance. Yes. And sadly, actually, I mean, the opposition party is not strong enough, but we need actually a debate and actually on policies, you know, mm. and Mondays, obviously, I mean, um, you know, that's what we need, not yeah. actually on immigration. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Benjamin said, we need a debate of substance. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk further about immigration. Thank you. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Come hear Courtney's plans for the future of Victoria Mutual in the UK. Get updates on Jamaica and share your concerns about the current state of affairs. Meet other members of the leadership and property services team from Jamaica, including the Chairman of Victoria Mutual, Michael McMorris. Friday, June 16th, Unity Centre, NW10. Thursday, June 22nd, at Tottenham Town Hall and Friday, June 23rd at the Kia Oval. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission is free. Call 0208 801 6777 to confirm your attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. And of course, I've got Mr. Ventris Henry, immigration lawyer in the UK. And we're talking about Brexit and many other things affecting immigration for Caribbean persons as well in the UK. Ventris, welcome back. Yeah. I'm glad that you didn't went away on a case, you know what I mean? Because your phone keep ringing a while ago. <laughs> so listen, um, we, we're just going to touch a bit more on, on the Brexit factor, setting the stage, because we, 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 I think we'll be on this topic for the next two, three years in the UK area. Definitely, definitely. Now, how will Brexit affect like laws, immigrations of EU laws in the British judicial system? And it's like... Nobody's sort of mentioning these tremendous costs. Everybody's talking about um, everything will work out, blah, blah, blah. But the nitty gritty, some of people are saying, what does that mean? Not just in money, but if everyone focuses on that, a lot of important issues might be dropped, forgotten about. Where's the red herring? <laughs> the UK was part of, the, part of a union. Yes. The European Union. Yes. And when you're a union, you're one. Yes. So in divorce, mm -hmm will be deemed expensive. Yes. So you're divorcing actually from actually this union. And the European Union has a commitment to other countries, pledges, you know, yes. in terms of actually ch um, charitable organizations. See, they're getting a lot from the UK, though. <laughs> well, the UK also get a lot from actually the European Union as well. Yes, yes. You know, so mm -hmm. it's an interrelation, you know. I yes. mean, you know, so it, 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 it benefits for both. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a one-way thing. Yes. So, um, so I think obviously with this, this divorce will be very costly. Mm -hmm. They have to negotiate actually, I mean, um, not change the laws, in, yeah. laws in relation to actually, I mean, um, um, various actually regulations actually, um, they have to actually um, renegotiate actually trade deals, yes. you know, with the European Union, plus other countries as well. So I think, and it won't take, take some time as well. It won't take actually, I mean, two years. Yeah. There's too many different laws. Um, trade laws. The, 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 to, to cover, so yeah. it won't take, I don't think it'll take actually two years. Yeah, so therefore, it's a lot more complex than that. So, therefore, it, it is felt like, like people will be subject to the whims and fancies of the political masters then during a period of time. I mean, it won't be like a, a blow by blow, transparent discussion that keeps going back to parliament every time, isn't it? Well, it, it depends, you know, it's not only about parliament, it's about the European Union as well. Mm. You know, it's about actually the negotiation. Mm. So it's actually what the UK has to offer, mm. okay, and what they need from Europe. Yes. They need trade. Yes. You know, they didn't have to protect actually that mar the, the European market. Yeah. So it's, it's what they can offer. Yes. Um, you know, they, you know, they, they, they're from actually a masters. Yes. There's no way actually um, Germany actually and France want actually be easy in Europe because they mm. can't. It appears as it appears as if it's easier to just leave the union. Yes. And there's actually you be you strive you be better off as a yes. result. Yes. They can't because if actually even actually I mean country like actually I mean even France or Spain or some a strong mm. economical actually mm. country mm. that leave the union again, and then you send the wrong signal to other countries, yeah. other yeah. other members. So it's not as straightforward as people actually I mean are, are this concept the government is making out. Yeah. It's not as straightforward. Well, so. ladies and gentlemen, I mean we've been talking about Brexit forever, you know. But one of the real reasons why I wanted Benjamin on the show was I wanted to tap into this issue about. I keep hearing this all the while that, um, and this is it. If a child is born in the United States of America, that child, by virtue of 
birth is an American. Am I correct? It's true. If a child is but born... But for now. Well... Uh, I think Trump wanted to change uh, okay, that. Okay, okay, <laughs> right. So oh, he's doing some executive orders to change that. If a child is born in Jamaica, by virtue of being there in that jurisdiction, that child is a Jamaican. Um, but if a child is born in the UK, just because a child is born in the UK, that doesn't mean to say they are British. You actually have stateless children, ventures. Am I correct with that? Well, that's my actually own interpretation. <laughs> I, 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 I've children born in this country, Jamaican yeah. parents. Um, citizenship is derived as a matter of law. Yes. You know, every country has their particular law, different laws in relation to citizenship. Mm. Prior to 1983, a person born in this country, they are British. Mm. The law changed. Actually, in 1981, the National Act changed that. Yeah. If is that one of those secret laws that just keep passing no, through? I don't <laughs> know. It, 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 there are these no, regulations no, no, that just it, keep no, coming no, every day. It, 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 <laughs> no, no secret law, obviously. We know yeah. about it. It can't be secret. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah, of people yeah, 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 yeah. It's not secret. But um, what, what we're seeing now is this. The law states that if a person born in this country yes. okay, to a, a British citizen or a settled person, yes. that person is British. Right, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, by birth. If I was born in this country and neither parents have settled status or British, British citizenship, mm. they're not British citizen. Mm. That's a British nationality law. Yes. For Jamaican children, this is the problem we're having. If a Jamaican have a child outside Jamaica, mm -hmm. that child is eligible to be registered as a Jamaican citizen. Okay. Okay, yeah. Get okay. That point. Yeah. But until the registration actually happened and take place, and they issued with a certificate of entitlement, that child can't be deemed as a Jamaican citizen. And can't be deemed as British. And that child can't be deemed as British. Unless actually one of his parents has set a status are British. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So where did that leave that child? That child has to be deemed stateless. Mm -hmm. Because that child has no nationality. And, and then if the parents are not proactive, in the process then, because look at it this way. If the parents are not regularized for argument's sake, yes. and they are not having any papers, they might be a bit shy of coming forward to regularize that particular child as well, isn't it? If a child is born in this country, mm. that child actually has the right of residence in this country. They mm. may, not, may not be British, mm. they may not be Jamaican, but they have the right of residence in this country. Mm. Is when a child makes an application, yeah. you know, for leave to remain, well, that can be refused, and that child's status, you know, will come into play there and then. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if a if a, if a, if a parent has a child in this country and they are concerned about the child's and their own status, mm -hmm. obviously they go and seek legal advice. Yes, but sometimes, like we all know, some solicitors obviously um, don't give actually um, they don't have any client's best interest. Yes, yes. Or sometimes they're not actually, um, what should I say, competent, mm -hmm. you know, enough to actually them I mean, to give the right advice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was concerned, um, I was in my office actually a few, couple of years back, and this client came to see me and she was talking about raising her child as a Jamaican citizen. Mm -hmm. And it really played in my mind for a couple of days. I said, if the child was born Jamaican, mm -hmm. why do you need to raise the child as a Jamaican citizen? Yeah, yeah. There's be something wrong mm -hmm. with that practice. So I went and did some research. I went obviously and actually explored um, the statelessness convention yes. and mm -hmm. extensively. Yes. And the convention states, if an act is required to acquire citizenship mm -hmm. until the act is completed, you can't be a citizen of that country. Mm -hmm. So if you need to register as a Jamaican citizen until registration is completed and they issue the certificate, yes. you can't be a Jamaican. But if you're not a Jamaican and you're not British, yes. We don't leave you as a child. And that's a 1954 convention guideline, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. So that actually, I mean, make you stateless. But if you're stateless and live in, the country for five, in this country for five years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. under that convention, the UK has a duty mm -hmm. to register as a British citizen. So, okay, let's go back to the Jamaica side now, okay? Because that child, born to Jamaican parentage, by virtue of such birth, they are, they've got a right 
to make that application to be eligible. Yeah, eligible. Yes, yeah, eligible. Yes, right. That's it. But are we saying that they should need to do that? No, they have a choice. They can if they want. To. No, 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 no. Should 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 there be a system whereby they don't really need to? They shouldn't. By virtue of that, it should just well, be conferred upon them. Like, well, once a well, parent's per, birth certificate show that. Well, look at Nigeria. Actually, I mean, yeah. Nigeria. Actually, I'm um, you know national to law. Mm. If a person is born to this country, in this country, Nigerian parents, mm. all you need to provide is actually is your, your birth certificate. Yes. And your parents actually um, proof. That they are Nigerian national, and that's enough. You know, there's no registration, yeah. no registration process. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying obviously anything wrong with actually our, our own practice mm -hmm. in terms of you have to actually register a Jamaican citizen. Nothing wrong with that, I, I don't think. Yeah. But people just need to be informed. Right. And educate us to their rights and entitlement. Right. If they're informed, you know, if they're ignorant to the fact, yes. then I'm fine with it. Right. Okay. So therefore, the key factor then is information. Information. Yes. So do we see then? I mean, because. There, there have been cases, and there, uh, people have been talking about um, children or people being in the country for years, and all of a sudden they have been deported to Jamaica, never ever stepped foot in Jamaica at all. Well, again, about actually information and about mm -hmm. education. Yeah. If a person born in this country mm -hmm. and never registered as a Jamaican citizen, they have the right of residence in this country. Yes. And there is no way. The Jamaican authority can issue them with a travel document or a passport mm -hmm. because effectively they're not Jamaican citizen. Mm -hmm. They are indeed stateless. Yeah. So if people actually actually is um what should I say now, is aware of their actually rights. Yeah. Okay? And actually I mean um not ignorant to the nationality law yes. of Jamaica and the UK, then it'll be okay. Because you can't put a person born in this country if they mm. never to Jamaica, if they never is a Jamaican citizen. So therefore, so therefore, are we are we saying then we can dispel all those sort of myths, all those sort of sayings that people were deported to Jamaica <clears throat> was never been to Jamaica? Because sometimes that's what they hear with all these secret plane, which we'll talk about next week when we come back on it. You know, I think the problem we're having is this: sometimes yeah. people just sign documentation; they don't know what they are signing. Yes. They might be attached to the immigration center, and somebody says, sign this, mm. and they sign. So now what they actually sign, they're signed to actually be registered as a Jamaican citizen. Right. Sometimes they're in prison, they say, actually, can you sign this documentation, obviously, so you can actually yes. like a uh, uh, document or whatever, to, and, and they sign documentation. Mm. But it's best for them to actually say, get the advice from a solicitor, mm. or read whatever you're signing. Mm. Or if somebody comes from Jamaican Commission to actually ask the question, make sure you ask relevant questions as well. Mm -hmm. What is this for, obviously? I mean, what am I signing? And make sure at no given time, you know, you send away actually your rights or entitlement. Mm -hmm. Because if a person is born in this country, like I said yes. to you, they have the right of residence in the, in, the, in the UK. Yes. You can't apply for a passport from the Jamaican Commission mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're a Jamaican citizen. Mm -hmm. And if you're never actually registered to be a Jamaican citizen, there's no way you're entitled to a passport mm -hmm. or a shop document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my command says this. If you're born in the UK, live here all your life, yes. never been to Jamaica, mm -hmm. never registered Jamaican citizen, and commit a serious criminal offense in this country, mm -hmm. and face deportation to Jamaica, then something is wrong. Yes. Because if you issued that documentation, it couldn't be right because you're not a Jamaican citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're listening to that. So do you think the message is getting through information-wise to the wider populace of uh, it's not just a Jamaican issue also, is it just a Jamaican thing? Well, no, actually, for, um, I think for Trinidad for Guyana, um, yes. it's a similar process, right. similar actually practice. We mm. have to register as, um, mm. before, obviously, the since is conferring you. Yes. So I think, obviously, yeah. not isolated to a Jamaican national, yes. uh, Jamaican authority. But I can say this, I think um, our president, actually, I Commissioner, mm -hmm. His Excellency, um, um, His Excellency yeah. Ramakan, mm -hmm. obviously, and, you know, his predecessor, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. They have been actually Quite proactive, uh, proactive yes. educating actual people, informing people as to actually um, their, their rights. In, in terms of, they will actually direct them, yes. you know, to the appropriate authorities and the right people. I, I, I mean, honor, I mean, honourable former um, ambassador Aluna Samba, she's been on the show and she pushed it as well as much as possible. We work together on different things, you know. Um, and even last a couple of nights ago, VMBS had something in Birmingham whereby they were greet and meet 
one of their program with a lot of Jamaicans down there with a, a panel of uh, immigration lawyers as well, uh, Asian solicitors. So I think they're pushing the whole issue. Yeah. I, I would say the silver as well. Mm. I, was, I was called um, from, I received a call on Wednesday yeah. from the Jamaican High Commission, um, well, the office. Mm. And they said the gentleman came, spent 10 years in prison, mm. And he wanted to go back to Jamaica. He came with about 14 bags to the Jamaican mm. Commission. He brought his Jamaican, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was Jamaican parents, born in mm. this country, so Jamaican parents. Mm. And they were saying, obviously, we can't send it, but we can't issue it a travel document. We can't even yes. give you a passport yes. because you're not a Jamaican citizen. Mm. You have been registered as a Jamaican citizen, so we can't actually assist you. Mm. In the end, they tried, actually, I think they gave him some money. Um, they provided him with actually transportation. Yes. And they actually helped him to get actually, I mean, a hostel for the night. Yes, yes. But the issue is this. He was born in this country to Jamaican parents. Yes. But he was a Jamaican citizen. I wasn't registered mm. as a Jamaican. So therefore, they couldn't even assist him with a travel document. Yes. To Jamaica. Wow. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we're going to take part two of that story. And uh, we'll tell you more about um, this whole issue, statelessness and the Brexit factor. But next week, we're going to be talking about some of those nitty gritty about the secret plane. If there's really some secret plane going back to taking people to Jamaica. See you next time. Thank you. And if they're very vulnerable, mm. and they actually end up in the wrong group in Jamaica, mm. you know, then they're in trouble. Mm. And sometimes Jamaica is actually in trouble as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time. Hi, I'm Venture Senery, solicitor, member of Greenland Lawyers LLP. I've been on The Silburn Show. Please subscribe. The Silburn Show. <laughs>